Hey guys, how are you? Uh, well, I'm sorry because I have changed my placing a bit. It's not as appealing as it used to be. It's very rough. Um, well, the reason behind it is I, I need it to be a little bit comfortable. And um, with so much organizing everything, it gets really hard to focus on your art. Um, so, today, mm -hmm, I am going to talk a little bit about my art. The way I practice art, if you want, you can follow the exact same way. If you have seen my previous videos, you, you might see that I had struggled to follow one, um, outline uh, what I mean is when I'm drawing like today I'm going to draw a picture of um, Bihu festival Bihu dancing so today what I wanted to tell you is that you have often uh, often seen me struggling uh, with my outlines well like this uh, as you can see now i am making one single outline the problem with me is i am never able to follow one single outline throughout my art practice i have followed a number of i mean i have practiced my drawings with using a number of lines uh, like this as you can see what i'm doing right now these lines are called supporting lines and this is a great technique instead of you trying to make one single circle you can get comfortable with your pencil using a lot of supporting lines like this and then out of all these supporting lines you can choose to follow one and make that your um, final line you want to keep. So th that's the thing that um, if you had seen my previous videos, I I tried a lot to do it in one single line, but I couldn't because you know every artist is different and they use different techniques. So basically, I'm a very impatient artist. So, it's hard for me to focus on one single line, to draw in a line like that, because I, I really get very distracted. Uh, that's a problem with me. So, when I am using a lot of supporting lines, what happens is um, I'm able to focus. I'm, I'm not letting my mind to go elsewhere. I'm trying to con constantly focus on one single on one single job. So that's a, a that's a very good way to concentrate. So if you're very impatient with your art and uh, you often get really impatient following one single outline to draw the entire picture. Uh, and of course your outline is uh, not professional because you lack practice, you lack skills. Uh, it's better you start with supporting lines. Uh, it's very hard to get rid of supporting lines as you improve because I don't know, uh, for me what happened is I use a lot of supporting lines today mm, than I had used during my practice over the years, uh, if that makes sense. And also, I'm not that good in English. Would you please uh, excuse me? Yeah, my English is not my first language. But I try to. I try to explain anyway. Uh, it might be 
it might be confusing I will try to fix it but you know uh, you have to uh, try and understand what I'm trying to say here please do that for me I know you understand what I'm saying it's just my sentences are not always um, accurate but you will you will be able to make sense out of it I think all right so and uh, like like you can see me right now what I'm doing is I am still using a lot of supporting lines it, this also uh, okay Supporting lines are there to guide you, guide your pencil to the right direction. Mm, and uh, actually, I have seen a lot of great artists using a lot of supporting lines. To tell you the truth, uh, um, it, it's very rare for artists to use one single line or complete their uh, pencil works in one single line. Um, I'm not sure why that happens, but it does. So, I had been a great fan of drawing in a lot of lines since my childhood. I, I didn't actually, maybe I, I, I had seen some of the works, previous works of artists, and uh, I was um, greatly... Mm, uh, interested I was I was uh, obsessed I I am not being able to find the word I'm so sorry well that greatly inspired me let's just say that to uh, work in a lot of supporting lines and since my childhood I had followed a lot of supporting lines to do my artworks it, it looked very cool and professional really to me and that's why I used uh, so many lines to do my artworks basically but then I find out I found out that uh, these lines were supposed to guide you towards your final outcome of your artwork so try to use a lot of supporting lines if you're very impatient and uh, when you try to do something in one outline you need a lot of skills and that's that's true and uh, often the drawing looks pretty boring and flat but using a lot of lines it's kind of fun it's not boring and I have I've, I've found that I've found myself getting very bored if I'm trying to do a drawing in one outline I don't know why the technique doesn't suit maybe that's why Uh, so this technique is very effective for um, those who get those who get uh, really impatient doesn't want to draw um, and of course um, completing in one outline work is is um, very hard so allow yourself to use these supporting lines to guide your pencil to the final outcome and uh, when you uh, use lines what happens is uh, in drawing a complicated object while drawing a complicated object what happens is you will be able to break that object in various segments in smaller segments uh, that is a very uh, um, easy way to draw a complicated object. If you can suppose um, this is a house. This is the first thing I think we learn to draw in elementary school. A house, a very obvious thing. But instead of doing it in one go, in one outline 
if if it was uh, easier for i think it would be easier for you to break the object into smaller divisions like here we can see a rectangle so we draw a rectangle first then a, then a square here all right then a triangle here and then this Thing, what do we call it a forgotten parallelogram or something I don't know so this thing over here so you have broken this object into various segments just by using a lot of lines so see there in this in this one there is more character than the other one and um, like this by using lines you can always uh, fix your mistakes first and for the end results you can rub out your supporting lines if you wish you keep the final line and then you rub out the supporting lines okay so in your drawing your guidelines or your supporting lines they actually contribute a lot it guides you to a um, perfect drawing and also it creates depth and the picture is no longer flat maybe it's not clean but the thing is about art we don't want clean we don't want picture perfect art because there is photography to do that part i mean to me i mean of course from my perspective i'm saying that so uh most of the time I find my techniques very messy, uh, to tell the truth, <laughs> yeah, um, my uh, pictures aren't perfect, but I see depth in it, I see a lot of movements, and that's what I like about, about drawing or creating art, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, Art is never perfect and that's why you you continuously learn something new you know because if you stop making mistakes in art that's the end of your uh, artistic career because you won't be able to give something new to put something new in your art anymore if you stop making mistakes so it is very important that you are not scared of doing mistakes and of course a lot of people a lot of people like us we don't take art as a career we just like to draw not because of anyone because it is relaxing to draw to try something new to try to focus on something it's a kind of meditation so not every one of us are looking for a career in art, to tell you the truth. So why not take a risk and play with your work, right? What's the worst that can happen? You will, you will mess up something and then you will throw out the paper, start on something new. Trust me, if you're relaxed that way, like I don't have to be perfect. I'm just doing it because I want to. If you give that chance to yourself, it's it's going to be easier and you're going to enjoy the process. And that's why there is art in our life to help us to escape. Art is escape, a way you can escape from reality. Right? So so it's okay. Don't don't be so hard on yourself. Just learn something new. Mm hmm. Okay. I don't know what to talk about anymore. And also, I'm not a multitasker. You speak and you draw at the same time, it's very hard. People who can do it, trust me, they're uh, genius people.
the truth about my art is I n never try my artworks to be perfect because it, for me it's an escape and when I'm doing it it's kind of like a meditation and I'm, so I'm in a meditative state it's very relaxing like right now I have pulled out an outline you can see and um and I'm very much displeased with it I mean I, I don't like making one line like this no it's it's not fun it should be a lot of supporting lines at first it's not fun and uh, it doesn't doesn't make me feel good maybe that's why I struggle a lot with one single outline it's just it doesn't I don't want to and when you don't want something it's really hard to achieve you know suppose you don't like maths but still you have to practice maths but you will never be a professor in maths if you don't enjoy it maybe you can pass your exams also probably achieve good grades but if you don't if you're not passionate about maths you can never be a professor in maths i mean even if you do it might be an exception it's not a general thing we're not going to talk about exceptions um so that's the thing so be passionate about something and if you're not please just stop don't waste your time I mean, if you're not passionate about art, don't waste your time. Probably you like doing maths, so it's okay. You should, you should try to do maths if that com calms you down during a, when you're having a hard time. Who knows what can calm you down? For me, it's art. For you, it might be practicing medical, anything, you know. If you have passion for something that turns out into art, that's what that that's what I believe. I mean, if a doctor is passionate about his profession and he takes patients seriously, he's, he's taking uh, medical school seriously because he likes it, then that is art. It's no longer a profession, it becomes art. So you have to be passionate about something. Most of us actually, we don't realize the fact. Any subject, if you practice with passion, it turns out it turns into art because there is passion in it. There is affection in it. You feel a strong connection with that subject or with that area of your learning. It drives you towards that area of learning. Only with art, um, making a career is uh, is very hard. For which reason people actually don't consider art like fine art. People don't consider fine art as a good career choice. And that, that's pretty pretty practical, of course. It's not like our parents want our that or anything if a parent is like concerned about you and if a parent is like telling you uh so what if you're interested in art there is no career in it it's okay you know it's okay um your parent is only trying to guide you yes they do put a lot of pressure on us and they most probably don't realize it that's not their fault they're only human 
All right. Mm, but you know, in this case, I'm going to say that you can practice art, but you don't have to study art if you are very much concerned about your career. Like, or there is no career in art. If that's what you think, then it's okay. You can keep it as your hobby. You can practice it. And these days, you you don't have to be one thing at a time. You can be so many things at a time. You can be a doctor and a painter at a time. That is possible. So don't give up on your dreams. If you're good in other subjects that help you to mm, make a good career, then then that's fine. Then just then that's great. Like if you like engineering and art at the same time, of course, undoubtedly, I think engineering is a good career path. So you take up engineering as your career and keep art as your hobby. And one day, probably you also will turn into an artist, an engineer and an artist. What's so bad about that, right? So today, we don't have to stick to one career. So don't get upset. Like, don't get frustrated. Don't think like I am so much interested in doing something and uh, I'm not being able to because of my family won't let me okay so this is uh, the first drawing then you can put the faces and everything if you wish to but trust me right now I'm not feeling so patient anyway uh, like I said, I, I do get distracted a lot. I do get very much distracted. Okay. Mm. If you want it to be a scenery, maybe we can, what do you call it? This is a musical instrument, but I, I don't know what you call it. Well, in Bengali, we call it dhol. Uh, India is like... Got so many languages, so many communities. Oh, and <laughs> we probably share the same instrument and everything, but definitely we don't always share the same language and culture great about India versatility and you don't have to be bored when you're in in India because you want to go out for a break from your work from your education just go to some another state it's like you will be in another part of the world but that's that's what's so great about it with so many versatility so many differences and we have so many festivals as well it's so great and I love festivals because I'm a person who gets bored guys I think I'm going to finish it over here my battery is running out of charge and I'm so sorry maybe we will talk again in the next tutorial so thank you bye bye have a good day